In this video, we are going to go over how to distribute the compilation of huge Unreal Engine C++ code bases to local or remote machines using the Horde system with UBA, aka the Unreal Build Accelerator. First, I'm going to assume that you have either Unreal Engine from source downloaded and set up in Visual Studio. We have a video covering that. You only have to watch up to 6 minutes and 23 seconds, or you have a massive Unreal C++ project that takes a while to build on one machine. For example, Epic Games uses Horde for Fortnite every single night. Before we move on though, I just want to quickly explain the architecture of the Horde setup that we will be creating today. So the computer that you have the Unreal source code or some big Unreal C++ project on, where you will be initiating the build, we're going to refer to that as the host machine. Then you have a separate computer that acts as a orchestrator by running a piece of software called the Horde server, which is what the host machine connects to and is responsible for distributing build tasks for the host machine to worker machines and getting the results from those workers back to the host machine. Each of those worker machines have a piece of software called the Horde agent which allows these machines to be assigned build tasks by the Horde server and then to actually perform those said tasks. With that said, let's set up the Horde server. You can use another computer, but for this tutorial, I'm going to use AWS EC2 instances for both the Horde server and the Horde agents. Create an account if you don't have one. Just a warning, you will need a paid account. If you already have a free account, then you'll need to convert that to a paid account. The reason is that the free tier account does not have access to stronger EC2 instances that you will need for building Unreal Engine source. If you don't plan on using the cloud for the Horde server, then just skip to the part of the video where I SSH into a Linux EC2 instance, even if your on-prem machine is a Windows machine. Sign into your AWS account, go to the EC2 page, instances, and click on where it says launch instances. Name the instance whatever you want. For the AMI, any flavor of Linux will do. You can actually even use Windows for this as well, but I'm going to select Ubuntu. Make sure that the architecture is x86, not ARM. For the instance type, the machine running the Horde server doesn't need to be that strong CPU and RAM wise unless you plan on setting up a lot of worker machines. But it can't be too weak either, and it should have decent bandwidth. I've been experimenting with C6 in that large, but feel free to use a different instance type. For the key pair, create one if you don't have one. This is how we are going to remotely connect into our machines and install the Horde software on them. For network settings, either create or use an existing security group so long that the group allows SSH traffic from either anywhere or your IP address. Lastly, eight gigabytes of storage is fine for the server, unless again, you have a ton of worker machines or a really massive C++ project. Once all that's been configured, launch the instance. Go back to the instances page and wait for the instance state to be both running and that three out of three status checks have passed. Should take a couple of minutes. In the meantime, let's edit the security group attached to the instance to allow for inbound traffic to ports 13.340 and 13.342, since those are the ports that the Horde server uses. Once that's done, let's also allocate an elastic IP address for this EC2 instance because EC2 instance public IP addresses can change at any moment. After allocating the address, associate it with the new EC2 instance so that we have a fixed public IP address that we can remote connect to. To SSH into the newly launched instance, launch the Windows subsystem for Linux. If you don't have it installed, refer to this documentation linked in the description below. Then change the working directory to where you download that PEM file from earlier when we created that login key pair while making the EC2 instance. For me, it's in my downloads folder. By using the WSL path command, all these commands will be in the description below. For these next two commands, go back to the instances page, select the instance and click connect SSH client, copy this chmod command, paste it in terminal, prefix it with sudo and run it. This only needs to be done once per PEM file. To actually connect to the instance, copy and paste this example command, prefix it with sudo, and press enter and say yes. 
Now to install the Horde server on a Windows machine, you can go to the Epic Games documentation for Horde and click the download link for the Horde Windows MSI installer. Since we're on Linux, we will be installing the Horde server by downloading the Docker image for Horde. For that, we need to first install Docker. For Ubuntu, go to the docs for Docker and copy and paste these commands into Terminal. Do the same for these other two commands in the documentation. Before we can actually pull the Docker image for the Horde server though, since Epic Games is a private GitHub organization, we need to log into Docker with a GitHub account that is a member of the Epic Games organization using a GitHub personal access token, which you can get from your GitHub account settings, specifically developer settings, personal access token, and generate a new classic token with permissions, to access and read from private repositories. Now in the Unreal Engine documentation, you have this docker login command, copy and paste it into terminal, prefix it with sudo, run it, and then when prompted, type in your GitHub username and copy and paste that personal access token that we just created. Going back to the documentation, you can either copy this pull command or one of the pull commands from the Horde server GitHub page if you're using a different version of Unreal than the latest version, which right now is 5.6.1. Paste it into terminal, prefix it with sudo, and then run the command. Then to start the Horde server, we need to spin up a container with this newly pulled Docker image. To do that, the Unreal Engine source code comes with a Docker Compose YAML file located in the engine, source, programs, Horde, Horde server directory, which contains the configurations to run the Horde server along with other dependencies such as MongoDB and Redis, all in containers. We have to copy this file over using the SCP command, so let's open up a new Ubuntu tab in Terminal and once again change the working directory to where that PEM file is located. Copy this SCP command from the description, replace remote-key.pem with the name of your PEM file, replace the location of the docker-compose.yaml file with the copied and paste path from File Explorer, and replace the IP address or DNS name with either the elastic IP address or that DNS name we used earlier from that example SSH command. And that should have copied the docker compose yaml file over to the ec2 instances home directory we can quickly verify this in the instance with ls now let's finally start the horde server with the docker compose file by running this docker compose up command prefixed by the word sudo. If the logs don't mention any errors, then go to either the elastic IP address or the public DNS at port 13340. And you should see the Horde homepage. If so, then you have successfully set up the Horde server and we are now ready to connect Horde agents to the server. We will be covering that in the next video, so if you enjoyed this video thus far and want to see even more videos on advanced Unreal Engine topics like these, then support the channel by either becoming a member on YouTube or becoming a patron on Patreon like our higher tiered patron Cassidy Pointer. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.